Welcome to Mainly Motorsports. Your host, Steve Perry, co-host Greg Emerson down here at Pepperell Mill Campus. And uh, it's like the last week, the calm before the storm. This is the, the storm, show right? before Christmas. Christmas. It really is. So, uh, boy, are you ready? No. Me neither. I will be, you know. It's one of those years. One of those years. So I know everybody's out doing their thing. So, uh, you know, probably a lot of people watching this show on DVR this week. If, if the viewers want to get us gifts and send them in, we'll take them. I haven't got a Christmas card yet from anybody. <laughs> anybody want to send me a Christmas card? So, no, I might have no. gotten one or something. So, we're when, still in our festive spirit, huh? Yeah. Uh, you need to water your plant. <laughs> well, I didn't know. I got it sunlight, brought it back to life. So, we're, we're trying to save it. So, uh, but, uh, no, it's uh, as we get closer to Christmas yeah. and then the first of the year... I mean, the Northeast Motorsports Expo, and we'll spend some more it's time. It's less than a month away now. We'll spend some more time today talking uh, talking about it and, you know, what's going on with it. And, you know, we're real excited about some of the things that are happening. And, you know, the mainlies are closed, the hell of a good. And really, uh, you know, I didn't touch much on the mainlies last week. Yep. And, I mean, literally, the closest voting I've ever seen. There was still some runaways, which there always is. But some of those categories, three categories changed hands in the last day of voting of voting one category closed with the winner having three more votes than the second place guy and 30 more votes than the third place guy with almost 6,000 votes cast that's pretty amazing right and and pretty how amazing. how was the uh the uh, vote count compared to the past years is pretty close there you yeah. know every year we're in that 6,000 range 6,000 yep. range and this year i think we're actually a, you know, the voting was a week shorter than it had been in the past. Yep. So, so it was all good. Uh, the hell of a good 25, I mean, same thing. You got the ones that just take off. Yeah. But then you had that next batch. And, you know, with three days to go in the voting, I looked at everything, see where we're at. Felt confident and comfortable enough to lock the first 22 in. Yeah. You know, say, so you know what, because... You are voting and, you know, for 15 every time. So chances are if you vote for one of the guys that's 24, 25th, 26th, you're also going to vote for one of those guys that's in the top 22, you know. But I had like eight guys battling for the last three slots within 10 votes of each other. Yeah. It was amazing. You know, it was amazing. It kind of reminded me of the Young Gun thing that we did this past January at the, you know, at the Augusta show. You know, one more vote by one person would have knocked one of our three finalists out. You know what I mean? So That's I mean, crazy. That close. So really appreciate all the fans going to mainlymotorsportstv.com and voting. And now if you want to know who the winners are, you got to go to the Northeast Motorsports Expo. Got to be there. And uh, we'll be announcing the mainly winners all weekend long. Uh, the driver of the years for the Northeast Motorsports Expo, the nice clock plaques we give away. We'll yep. be announcing them throughout the weekend as we see them, you know, the winners walking around. And then, you know, the hell of a good... You know, Are you talking about awards at the show? <laughs> Who does the awards for your show? Who well, makes the stuff? Award champs. You get them on your head. Bam. That's right. And uh, Todd is, you know, he's real happy with me because we're a month <laughs> out. And I'm way ahead of schedule, you know, really. Everything's yeah. ordered and, uh, you know, real real happy. And, you know, with the relationship we've established with Todd and, you know, uh, anybody looking for, you know, it's sponsor plaque time and, you know, yeah. and all that. And search him out. Go to our site and click over or go to awardchamps.com and, you know, Check out what he has to offer because his prices and his... He's very reasonable and does a great the job. The thing that impresses me more than anything is the customer service. Yeah. You know, I mean, he, you could actually order your sponsor plaques, never step foot in his office or build, and get it and get what you need. You know, he does, a, you know, send you proofs, you know, yep. over the internet. And I mean, just, just amazing. I mean, that's how I do all mine. I go in, we talk about what we need. We order, he sends me a proof. What do you think of this? Yeah, yep. looks good, done. And then I pick them up, all done, you know? So, right. It's really, it's really good. So, you know, anybody looking for anything, any tracks? I mean, he does Beechridge's awards. Yep. When Pass comes to Beechridge, he does that. You know, does the the Nell cars, Richmond Carding Speedway, does a lot of, a lot of organizations. The Pathfinders, you know, and yep. you know, we've played a part in a lot establishing some of those relationships. Business with him, you know? yeah. So he also does, you know, school awards for soccer and this and yeah, that. He, and he does it all. So, you know, real happy, and I think everybody's really going to enjoy the awards up there. Uh, you know, the sponsor awards, the the Award of Excellence that I started the first year of the show. This will be my fourth one we passed out. Year one, we went to Tim Attire for yep. his contributions to the sport. Year two, went to Peter Prescott 
for his contributions to the sport. Year three, Bob Bear. Who who will it be this year? Who you know? will it be? You know, I mean, it's you, it's just gonna be a whirlwind of stuff this year up there. Yeah, it is. It is, and we got a great. I'm so looking forward to it, but at the same time, I'm not looking forward to it. I'll be fine. <laughs> Oh, you say I, that. That's one of your famous. That's a Perryism too. Be ah, it'll be fine. Be, everything will be all right. <laughs> Someday ask Lux what that means. <laughs> you see Mike Lux ask him, hey, when Perry says it's going to be all right, what's that mean? <laughs> He'll tell you. It means you're sleeping in a tent on the sidewalk. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> but no, it's uh, really exciting. And we got a great show planned here today. Uh, Derek Nealon, a you know, old friend of both of ours. And, yep. You know, a, a Mainer. We had on a show back earlier in June, I think, at the yep. Pro Series 100. He, did a deal with Naughty Forty Racing. Uh, he's got got some exciting news he wants to talk about in his career. You know? Yep. Um, you and him struck a deal at the Derby that he would wait and hold off. And I know I've we'll been all over Facebook. As a matter of fact, I was at my daughter's uh, dance recital, uh, Winter Pageant, this past weekend, and I had people saying to me, "He won't even tell his family." You know, we want to know, and he won't even tell his family because you know he wants to announce it on your show. So, one yeah. for Grego. Yeah, I uh, I struck a little deal with him and. He found out a little sooner than what he thought he was gonna, so he's literally been sitting on his hands for a week. Oh, that's good. And then, and then we went out and uh, you know we talked about it last week. Any champions that you know interested in to you know Absolutely, kind of plug yeah. themselves, talk about the year, their future, their sponsors. You know, search us out and uh, yeah, search us out because this is like like we've been talking about. We have the you know the Northeast Motorsports Expo that just went. Up. That's it, coming right up. We just went to the Snowball Derby. We're, we're, we've been busy the last few weeks. It's it's not that we don't want people to to showcase. Yeah. You know, but we're just busy. If if you call us out, we're gonna have you in here. Yeah. So we got Robbie Greenleaf in here today, the the mini stock champion from the last year of Bill Ryan's ownership up there at Oxford Plains Speedway. Yeah. So uh, you know, there uh, Robbie took a ride down and you know into the studio, and we're gonna hear what he has to say about his. You know, pretty phenomenal year. I mean, yeah, pretty phenomenal year. Absolutely. You know? I mean, showed up, drove in the gate the last week, maybe two weeks, didn't even have to show up. You know, had that much of a <laughs> comfortable point lead, which is always a good thing. Yeah, so it is. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll get Robbie Greenleaf in the studio and hear about, uh, you know, his championship season up there at Oxford. Hatman's Redemption and Agency Liquor Store is located at 95 Tanberg Trail in Wyndham, Maine. With over 400 feet of hard liquor and 15 doors of ice-cold beer and soda, Patman's can handle all of your beverage needs. And if it's wine on your agenda, we have over 300 varieties in stock. Then when the party's over, Patman's can handle all of your main returnables, and we welcome all bottle drives. And if you're late for the race, drop off the bottles and pick up the cash at your convenience. Hey, this is Patman himself. Just letting you know that Patman's is your one-stop shop for all your thirsty needs. Hi, I'm Scott from Scotch Recreation. Most people know us for our RV sales and service. We're also Maine's largest trailer dealer. With over $1 million in stock and online at scotchrecreation.com. From two place opens to five place enclosed and everything in between. Our showrooms are stuffed with used snowmobiles, new jackets, bibs, pants, gloves, boots and helmets, plugs, belts, oil and more. We're ready for winter. Are you? Scott's Recreation, Route 4 Turner and Route 202 Manchester, Maine. You're watching Mainly Motorsports TV, brought to you by Moody's Collision Centers, now with seven convenient locations, Gorham, Scarborough, Biddeford, Portland, Sanford, Lewiston, and now South Portland. Visit us at moodyscollision.com. Award Champs, rewarding your champions, the official supplier of Mainly Motorsports TV. All right, welcome back to Mainly Motorsports, and we're here with the 2012 Mini Stock Champion, Robbie Greenlee from Oxford Plains Speedway, and uh, for a guy that's had as much success in your career, Robbie, you're not really a household name. And uh, So talk about your early career in racing and what led you to the point you're at now. Uh, I started in 99. I did a couple of races in 99, but I didn't do many. 2000, I really started. And so 2002 was like my first championship at West Cassett. Really? So it didn't take you long to figure out how to win championships? <clears throat> no. No? <laughs> now, 2012, you raced up to Oxford. And that mini stock class, I mean, they, they got some heavy hitters. I mean, obviously, Jimmy Childs. Uh, the Marshall kid, I can't even think of his first name now, uh, you know, he, he wins championships and, uh, you know, but you this year, I don't know how many races you won, but you had one of those years that everybody dreams about when you can come in the last two or three weeks of the season, you don't even have to show up because you pretty much got it wrapped up. Yeah, we, we keep the car pretty well maintained, so it stays together pretty good. Now, 
talk about your year at Oxford in 2012. What were your stats? I mean, how many wins and, you know, things like that? We got three wins, I believe. And I think we only finished our top five or three, like, twice. Really? So consistency, and that's what wins championships. I mean, obviously, you know, winning races helps, but it's that consistency thing. Not breaking, you know, not putting yourself, what I call, in position to fail, you know. You know who you can and can't race against, you know. So then, uh, you know, you mentioned Wiscasset in 2002, but talk about some of the other championships that you've won over the years. I got another one at Wiscasset in 2004 and 2005 back-to-back. Yeah. And then we took, a, we took a year off and then came back. Now, didn't you, did you win the championship the last year that they ran? 2010, yeah. With Doug? So what do you think is going to happen over there this year? I mean, have you followed along with what's going on with Richard and Vanessa? And I think it would be a little crazy this first year, but I think they'll get it underway. Which is good, and it's, it's neat because me and Greg talked about it a couple weeks ago. we got six racetracks in the state. Unity's done nothing yet, but between Spud, Oxford, and Wiscasset, we got three of them that have changed hands and ownership hands, you know. So it's going to be interesting to see if they, any of them make any major changes from what the previous owners did or if they just kind of stay with the norm, you know. Now, you know, you've run the mini stock deal. Uh, is that what you've always run since you started racing? That's all we've ever had, four-cylinder. So you've traveled around at Wiscasset, obviously Oxford. Um, what do these tracks do? do? Are their rule packages pretty close, or do you think they need to do some work to kind of get those rules packages close to give you guys a chance to go to other tracks? Because what they don't realize, if you can go to other tracks, that means you can also support those other tracks once in a great while. They were close, but I think they're getting a little farther away now. So the tracks, them. the tracks are kind of, Oxford's got theirs, and, you know, Beatrice doesn't really have a mini stock class, but Wiscasset, Unity, and I don't, they don't always call them mini stocks, they call them other things, but... So what are some of the biggest differences you see in the rules packages when you look at Wiscasset versus Oxford versus Speedway 95? A lot of this body and the, how the chassis is built and the suspension. That's what the, some of the yeah. bigger changes are? and what you can do to the motors. Now, speaking of motors, you got the Northeast Mini Stock Tour, Bob Guptill. I mean, everybody asks me, what's up with Bob Guptill? How does he do it? I don't know. I mean, the, he's basic. I call him a kid, but... You know, he's raced his tour pretty much on every track in New England and some of the best facilities, you know, that, that we have, you know. And, and I think next year he's going to Thunder Road, and, and, you know, it's a big deal for him to get into those places. Now, you ran that tour a couple of years ago. What, what, what was your experience? What did you think about that tour? I really like the different tracks. It's really fun to travel around and see what else, what else is out there. Yeah, and he gets pretty good car counts, doesn't he? Yeah, because you get the local guys, and then sometimes you get the guys from another town. Now, when you ran that tour there, what'd you run that in 2011? 2011, yeah. How'd you make out? We won the championship there. Is there anything you don't do other than win championships? And, <laughs> I mean, really, right? I mean, you just win, you go and win championships. So. Yeah, we just always stay up front, you know, just consistency. We just try to keep up there. Yeah, yeah. Now, have you run the same car for many years? or? This is a, we built this one in 2010, yep. which is a Dodge Neon. So it's a Neon? Yeah, before that we had a Dodge Charger. So you're a Dodge guy? Yeah. I take it. <laughs> My crew chief is, so that's what he knows. That's yeah, what I drive. You have to be. You have to be. <laughs> now, what keeps you from traveling and going with the mini stock tour? I mean, you had, sounds like you had a good experience, you know? Well, last year the fuel price was, was really bad on the fuel. But yeah. So this year should be pretty good. The fuel price is back down again. So maybe you'll hit a few, hit a few of those races? Yeah. What are the plans for 2013? Well, look, it's looking like Oxford, but it's, I never have set in stone until it's time to go. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. Now, you mentioned your crew chief. Uh, who's some of the other crew members you have? You mentioned him and, as well as the sponsors that have, that have helped you get to this point. That's pretty much my crew chief. And usually my, you know, my mom usually comes out to all my races, so that's pretty yeah. much it. No sponsors? Have you got any? Mainly Motors is the only one I got. Really? And the guy that built the car is Warrior Chassis, which is Rich Suarez. Yeah. He built some good cars. And what's he build, like, on the, the, the mini stock side of things? He'll build anything. He does late models, too. Oh, really? Yeah. Where's he out of? He's out of Leeds. Really? So all you do is win races, win championships. You got one sponsor, right? I mean, what's the deal? <laughs> yeah. I, I just, sponsors are hard to get because I don't like going around asking for money, so it's hard to get sponsors. Yeah. No, you're right, but you got the resume, right? You, any, you're going to have a car at the car show this year? Or? You did yeah. a couple of years ago. I might, I might they, if we get it done in time. When but. they were, you know, when everybody was kind of stepping up and trying to keep Wiscasset on the map, you you were one of the guys that supported yeah. them, you know. That was my favorite track, but. 
Yeah. So could they see you over there a couple times this year? They're going to have a couple classes, I guess, there this year for us to go back a couple times here and there. Yeah. So what do you think? How many tracks can you run this year, different tracks with your car? Uh, well, if I, do the, if I did the tour, I could do quite a few. Yeah. But if you don't do the tour, if you concentrate on Oxford, I want to know how many, how many races I could expect to see you win at different tracks. I mean, that's quite a feat. You know, to be able to win at a bunch of different tracks in the same year. Yeah, we, the, only, the one we won last year, the, uh, the tour was Lee. Yeah. Well, the year before, I mean, when yeah. we won the championship. That's the only race we won. Really? You like that track? I like Lee. No kidding. Anything else you want to say? To, I mean, talk about, I mean, like I said, you're champion 2012. What do you think, what do you see in 2013 with the change of ownership? I don't know how much you've heard about what's going to go on. I mean, obviously, you're at the mini stock level, but you're not at the level with the, uh, you know, the super late model guys versus late model guys. But, you know, you hear it, right? You hear about the, all the scuttlebutt and everything. I mean, what's your take on it? I'm not sure. It's going to be a weird season, for sure. You think so? With all the different changes. I think the, the proof will be when 250 weekend rolls around and, right. you know, what that does. The crowd always stayed in the grandstands, but it was the crowd, I think, that backed up a little bit in the pits. We'll see what that does when, you know, if the, the crowd kind of pumps back up and gets, gets animated about the super late models being back because they've been screaming for it for, since they left in 2006. So I guess we'll all know that weekend. Yep. <laughs> all right, that's your 2012 mini stock champion from over at Oxford playing Speedway, Robbie Greenleaf, who just wins championships. So we're going to take a break, and we'll be right back here on Mainly Motorsports. Today's vehicles are equipped with complex safety features such as anti-lock brakes, seat belt restraints, and airbag systems. Even collision avoidance systems. Not available in all models. Hi, I'm Sean Moody from Moody's Collision Centers. We don't wish bad luck on anyone, but even with today's technology, we need to keep our eyes on the road and our hands on the wheel. Moody's Collision Centers, now with seven convenient locations, Gorham, Scarborough, Biddeford, Portland, Sanford, Lewiston, and now South Portland. Visit us at moodyscollision.com. Under the bright lights of your playing field, one performer continues to shine. The Fisher Extreme V. With durable X-bracing, the Extreme V carries the load. With precision passes, the power to bust through, the maximum protection of the Fisher trip edge, and the brightest lights available. Fisher. Your business, our passion. See Weir's Motor Sales Incorporated in Arundel. You're watching Mainly Motorsports TV, brought to you by Scotch Recreation. Whether you're thinking about your first camper or looking to upgrade your current one, Scotch Recreation can help you. Get both our Route 202 Manchester and our Route 4 Turner locations and online at scotchrecreation.com. LKQ Core. Any part, any repair, anywhere. Located on Route 202 in Gorham. Now, Greg, there's so much happening at the Northeast Motorsports Expo, but you know one of the interactive things that's going to be pretty exciting is the Last Chance Motorsports Pit Stop Challenge. Yeah. And you have the opportunity to come up with any kind of team that you want. Obviously, we have this media thing going on. I think it's going to be pretty funny watch me do all the things myself because <laughs> I can't get nobody to jump on my team. Why? I don't know. I'll help you out. We'll get you some. But we're going to split. We're going to have three levels for the professionals, the tour guys. So we're hoping some act tour guys, yep. uh, some past tour guys, all levels. But we'd like to see all those guys enter. Yep. Then we're going to have your Saturday night guys, you know, your pro series guys, your late model guys, your wildcat, strictly guys, yep. whatever. And then we're going to have a, a level for the midweek guys. So we got different times throughout the weekend. You just got to keep checking the website where you can come. And what, the way we're going to set it up is, you know, instead of putting the car there and then me, you, and Rob and Lamb standing there watching and then nobody else being able to see because we got the whole thing blocked off, we're going to petition everything off. You're going to be able to go upstairs to the Civic Center and sit in the bleachers or lean against the rail, whatever, and look down and actually watch the action, which is which will be pretty cool, you know, right, instead yeah. of most things on the ground level get blocked off by people, you know. And then uh, Friday night we'll have a time, Saturday we'll have three times, and what that'll do is then that'll give us the finalists for Sunday at each level. We'll bring three to five teams back on Sunday, and, uh, you know, I'll give them a ticket so they're going to pay again. Love to see them pay again, but I won't make them. And bring them back Sunday for the finals. 
and the finals are gonna, you know, there's gonna be prizes. We got a cup, a nice trophy cup for each team to display at their shop with yep. five plaques. So each crew member will get a plaque. We got awards. There's gonna be money awards for the winning teams each level. So I mean, it's gonna be something that you know, and bragging something rights. Something worthwhile, right? You know, so all you gotta line up is a jack guy, two tire changes, and two tire carriers. Not hard. Most teams have that. Now you. You got to line up four more guys other than yourself, and here's the deal on the media. So we're hoping to have you, Travis Barrett. I don't know, Travis Singerson. We might have to help him get his team because being over in Vermont, I don't know how many people he's going to be able to bring over from Vermont right. on Friday night. Kyle Fredrickson. Any other media people? Mike Twist. So us media people, myself, we line up our own team. The media person has to be a tire changer. So you have to change your tire, one of the tires. You can't take the easy job by carrying. You have to change a tire. I don't think the carrying is the easy job, but oh, whatever. I do. I'm good with that. All right. But your tire carrier has to be a female. Can you get a girl? How about your sister? <laughs> I mean, if she can run with a tire like she runs her mouth, right? <laughs> How's that going to go over this week? <laughs> Oh, I love it though. We had a great time with her in Florida. But am I right in saying what I'm saying? Am I right? Uh, uh, come on, say it. Man up. Am I right? Well, she's my sister, so. <laughs> no, but but you could have her on your team, right? Yeah. Then you have to have a Jackman. Your Jackman can be a driver. Actually, you can't. It has to be a driver. You know what I mean? So that's something they never do. So the Jackman has to be a driver. Then when you go to the other tire, your changer has to be a driver under the age of 20. Under the age of 20. Under the age of 20. So basically a kid. And then the, his carrier or her carrier has to be over 50. So there you go. So an over 50-year-old carrier, a woman carrier, a media changer, a kid changer, and a driver jack man. Yep. There you go. <laughs> as long as it's the same for everybody, it should be fair. Well, it is. I mean, what do you think? I'm going to manipulate the system? And I know you, you are, but that's beside the point. No, and you can't take a, a female driver and kill two birds with one stone. You, it has to, you can have two females on your team. Yeah, whatever. So, but that'll be fun. So, yeah. And what we'll do is, is I think what we'll give the media, you'll get two chances. Because you won't, we won't come back for the finals. Right. We'll give the media team, each media team, two chances and take their best time. Now, what is, uh, have we determined what we use them for a vehicle? A race car. Is it a old Bush car? Or is it an Act Late model? Is it a Pro Stock? Is it a Wildcat? Is it 5 on 5? Is it Wide 5? I'll announce before What are you show. using for a jack? Are you using an 88 pump CS Craftsman jack? Are you using a Listen, nice 3 just pump show jack? Up with your team. Or, just well, show I don't want to give my uh, driver. Jack man, a heart attack if he's going to pump 48,000 times. We'll be all set, right? So that's it. So the pit stop challenge going on all weekend. Something's shady happening here. Something Just shady. saying. Something shady. Between this guy and Jerry Humphrey, something yeah. shady. So Jerry's done a great job yeah, of putting everything together. The display area is going to look phenomenal. You know, yep. I mean, he's, and like I told Jerry when he first approached me, it's something I've wanted to do since I took the show over. But I wasn't going to do and just have it be like, oh, oh, yeah. I wanted people to, even when the pit stop challenge isn't going on, people to walk by and go, wow, what a nice display this is. This must be, when are they doing this again? Oh, two hours? We'll make sure we got to yeah. come back. And then, and then the finals on Sunday. And uh, one of the other things that I'm going to do is anybody that comes to the show on Friday or Saturday, you pay your admission to get in, save your ticket to come back Sunday for the finals, or if you want to just come back to the show again, and I'm going to knock, and I haven't decided on the price yet, but you're going to save yourself at least $3 off your admission on Sunday. No, I'm right. hoping everybody just don't go give their tickets away, but, you know, so just saying to that person that comes over Friday night and it's like everything happening and, geez, I wanted to stay longer, but the show's over, save your ticket, put it on the dash of your car or your truck or whatever, and come back come Sunday. Back for the you know, the finals. Fi and see the finals of the Pit Stop Challenge and see, you know, who's top dog. So it's going to be a great show. A lot of other things going on. We'll touch on more later in the show, but we're going to take a break. We come back, and I get you on the phone with Derek Nealon and uh, hear what he's got going on. Yeah, that'll be very interesting. Yep. We'll be right back on Mainly Motorsports. 
Hi, I'm Scott from Scotch Recreation. Most people know us for our RV sales and service. We're also Maine's largest trailer dealer. With over $1 million in stock and online at scotchrecreation.com. From two place opens to five place enclosed and everything in between. Our showrooms are stuffed with used snowmobiles, new jackets, bibs, pants, gloves, boots and helmets, plugs, belts, oil and more. We're ready for winter. Are you? Scott's Recreation, Route 4 Turner and Route 202 Manchester, Maine. Patman's Redemption and Agency Liquor Store is located at 95 Tanberg Trail in Wyndham, Maine. With over 400 feet of hard liquor and 15 doors of ice cold beer and soda, Patman's can handle all of your beverage needs. And if it's wine on your agenda, we have over 300 varieties in stock. Then when the party's over, Patman's can handle all of your main returnables and we welcome all bottle drives. And if you're late for the race, drop off the bottles and pick up the cash at your convenience. Hey, this is Patman himself. Just letting you know that Patman's is your one-stop shop for all your thirsty needs. You're watching Mainly Motorsports TV, brought to you by... Looking for a great time, great people, and great food? Then visit New England's number one biker destination, Bentley Saloon. Located on Route 1 in Arundel, see why Bentley says, who has more fun than us? We do. Southern Maine Motors, out to be Maine's number one Chrysler Dodge Jeep dealership, Route 1 Saco. Welcome to Mainly Motorsports. To order copies of a show, send a check of money out for $15, shipping and handling included, to Mainly Motorsports, 326 Roosevelt Trail, Wyndham, Maine, 04062. And please add a description of the show. Welcome back to Mainly Motorsports. And on the line with me, I have uh, spotter extraordinaire Derek Neal and a buddy of mine and Steve's from right here in Wyndham, Maine. And... Uh, we're going to talk to him about his uh, 2012 season and also what he's got going on for 2013 and some uh, other things coming up. So, uh, welcome to Mainly Motorsports, Derek. Hey, guys. How are you today? Not too bad. Uh, so, you know, you had a pretty good season for 2012. You uh, were full-time spotter for Brian Scott at Joe Gibbs Racing. Uh, how did how did your 2012 season turn out for you? Um. Honestly, it wasn't really, uh, you know, what we had wanted. Um, you know, we went into the season, uh, you know, he finished eighth in points last year. And, uh, you know, we were coming into a season we really thought we had a chance at, um, you know, going for the championship. Um, you know, we had a great group of, great group of uh, guys, and we had, you know, all brand new cars. Um, you know, we just, we start off, you know, old going at Daytona. And, um, you know, things just kind of went downhill quick, and then we started turning things around in California, finishing fourth. Um, you know, and then we started, you know, picking it back up. And, um, you know, there towards the middle part of the year, it was, just, it was just really up and down. We could never seem to get on a, a straight slide of, of good finishes. And uh, that kind of put us too far back. We just started, you know, going for wins and, um, you know, just trying to just play a lot of, um, you know, weird pit strategy with fuel and uh, tires, two tires, four tires, um, no tires, stuff like that. Um, and then actually we were able to finally get a win at the end of the season at uh, Phoenix um, with the truck for, uh, for Kyle on the 18, and that was great. Uh, I think it really helped him uh, going into uh, next year for sure uh, and getting a deal. So uh, 2012 wasn't all that great, but um, we were able to get some wins, um, you know, with having Brett Moth and stuff as my East driver and uh, getting that truck win. And um, I'm really looking forward to, to next year, that's for sure. So... You, you're talking next year already. What is on the agenda? Yeah. What What is on Derek Nealon's agenda for 2013? Uh, well, I'm really excited about it. Uh, you guys are the first ones that I've had an else to, except for my parents. They've known for a while. Um, I'm going over to uh, Richard Childress Racing uh, on the two-car with Brian Scott again. Um, that's going to be um, probably a two-year deal, uh, full-time nationwide. And then as of last, a week ago Wednesday, um, I got a call last Monday asking if I could come do the 2013 Cup test at Charlotte for, the, uh, for two days, basically as like a tryout for someone needing uh, you know, a full-time spotter for a Cup next year. Um, so for a Cup next year, um, maybe you know, years to go on, we'll see what happens uh, with this year. But I will be spotting for Juan Montoya uh, for Earnhardt uh, Ganassi Racing. So, now you, you touched on it a little bit. You got a call to do basically a tryout. So, how, do, how does that process work when you, when you go to try to climb the spotter ranks and, and you want to 
you want to try out for somebody. How does that process work? Uh, well, I mean, they're towards the end of the year, you know, usually every year. Um, you know, people always move around, you know, uh, you know, drivers moving to different teams, taking their spotter with them or just getting someone different. Um, so there's a lot of talk up there and a lot of talk just with other teams, you know, trying to get a hold of, you know, you know, me or somebody else or, you know, however it may be. So, like, five, six races left in the season, people are already talking, you know, what do you got going on for next year? Um, you know, what's opening up? Um, then you just you just go about um, contacting, you know, general managers, crew chiefs, drivers, uh, just saying, hey, you know, this is what I've got lined up so far for next year. Um, you know, if I don't have anything for Cup. If, if you guys are interested, you know, let's get down, you know, uh, have a meeting and, and see where you can go from there. Uh, it came together very fast. Uh, a buddy of mine who was spot for one this year, Jeff Dickerson, he's a spot for Kyle. Uh, he had got a hold of me and uh, said, be ready for uh, an interview for a cup team uh, this week. I was like, all right. And then it wasn't even a couple hours later, uh, the crew chief called me and asked if I was busy the next two days, saying that I had come, you know, highly recommended from Dickerson. And uh, I said no, and we, I went there on Tuesday and... You know, we went out there, and uh, you know, most for the most part, it was a lot of single car runs. He's got a little telemetry and stuff on there. Um, so it's just a matter of him getting used to my voice and me getting used to him and how, you know, he explains things, and then you know, me getting my feedback and what I see the car doing and stuff like that. Uh, then we were able to do two 15 lap um, runs with about nine or ten other cars. So we got to do the side by side, and uh, you know, more in like a draft stuff and, and race simulation so that way he can kind of understand how I did my thing and uh, there's a couple things that he needed me to do different for him um, and you know he explained it out perfect and uh, I'm just I'm looking forward to it I mean it's an opportunity of a lifetime uh, my goal was you know I wanted to spot for um, for cup by the time I was 30 uh, so this year I'll be 27 in June and uh, I'm just I'm just lucky enough to be able to do it yeah and that, that's you know that's pretty exciting not only for you and your immediate family, but also for your friends like myself and Steve, who've known you since you were a little kid and coming up through the ranks and, and stuff like that, to see you making these steps and stuff like that. You know, we're super excited for you and what you got going on. Now, I, I yeah, it's, um, it's, it's definitely a dream come true. I mean, like I said, it's, it, it, I mean, it's been a long, rocky road getting here. Um, I've just been, you know, really super lucky. Uh, you know, to, to just get the opportunities. And, uh, I mean, really, if, if it weren't for, uh, you know, people pushing me to come down here and try it and, uh, you know, Corey Williams, I started spotting for him. Um, when I got done racing myself, the features, and, you know, just, I don't know, I just you follow the path and eventually, you know, doors will open and uh, they just happen to open really fast for me. I'm, I'm, I'm lucky and I'm fortunate, that's for sure. Now, you're talking... You, you have basically two commitments for next year. You have your the commitment with Juan Pablo in the in the Earnhardt Ganassi 42, and you're also doing your, your deal with Brian Scott in the Nationwide for Richard Childress Racing. Uh, e- each team, I'm sure, that you know to be part of that team, you have weekly team commitments. What are your weekly team commitments like for each organization? Um, as of right now, uh, I'm not sure what is actually going to be on the agenda for um, meetings and stuff like that. Um, at Gibbs this year, you know, we did debriefs and, um, and uh, you know, pre-race stuff. After every weekend, we'd get together on, like, a Tuesday. We'd go to lunch, and uh, we'd talk about basically everything from the weekend as far as practice qualifying the race. Um, and then we would talk about the next upcoming race on how we wanted to uh, attack practice and uh, things that we want to try and, uh, you know, so on and so forth. Uh, so I'm not sure, um, you know, especially going to, you know, not only one team, I'm going to two new teams. Uh, I'm not sure what the commitment's going to be on that. Um, as of right now, you know, I'm not going to be uh, working in the shop. You know, everybody's like, oh, well, you know, it's just the weekend. Well, it's not. You leave, you know, Wednesday or Thursdays, and you don't get back until, you know, wee hours of the night sometimes on Sunday. So really my weekends are usually, you know, Monday and Tuesday. Uh, so right now, you know, I won't be in the shop, but, uh, that's of right now too. So I mean, things could change. Well, we uh, we look forward to seeing your smiling face on top of the stands out there, and be watching for you on TV. And I know you're coming home from to Maine for Christmas, so hope to see you when you come home. And uh, 
we'll uh, we'll be talking to you, Derek. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thanks for having me on, guys, and uh, hopefully. You'll be seeing me up top. Hopefully you'll be seeing us in Victory Lane a couple times. That's right, brother. All right, we'll be right back on uh, Mainly Motorsports. 0% financing for the first time in history on select certified pre-owned vehicles at Southern Main Motors. Southern Main Motors is selling so many new Chrysler, Dodge, and Jeeps that they are overloaded with great trade-ins. Now with live market vehicle pre-owned pricing gathered by electronically polling over 20,000 pre-owned car websites every hour, they will show you their competitor's closest vehicle and price, proof that you are getting the fairest deal out there. Visit them on Route 1 in Saco or online at southernmainmotors.com. Clark's Car Crushing has been a family-owned and operated business since 1978. We do everything from crushing cars, handling industrial scraps, to buying the scrap metal right out of the back of your pickup. Copper, brass, stainless steel, aluminum, you name it, we'll buy it. We have roll-off containers of all sizes for industrial accounts. We'll handle the legwork with full drop-off and pickup services. So for a professional job, guaranteed honest weights, and top dollar paid statewide, come see the Clark family in Farmingdale, Maine. Clark's Car Crushing. Don't fix it, scrap it. Hi, I'm Scott from Scotch Recreation. Most people know us for our RV sales and service. We're also Maine's largest trailer dealer. With over $1 million in stock and online at scotchrecreation.com. From two place opens to five place enclosed and everything in between. Our showrooms are stuffed with used snowmobiles, new jackets, bibs, pants, gloves, boots and helmets, plugs, belts, oil and more. We're ready for winter. Are you? Scott's Recreation, Route 4 Turner and Route 202 Manchester, Maine. You're watching Mainly Motorsports TV, brought to you by Award Champs, rewarding your champions, the official supplier of Mainly Motorsports TV. Moody's Collision Centers, now with seven convenient locations, Gorham, Scarborough, Biddeford, Portland, Sanford, Lewiston, and now South Portland. Visit us at moodyscollision.com. Well, anybody that's watching Mainly Motorsports, Greg, that doesn't know that the Northeast Motorsports Expo is coming up, is actually sleeping through the... Uh, through the show, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I've been talking to a lot of the tracks, tours, and organizations, and uh, getting, I'll tell you where we're getting some interest from, New Hampshire. Right. New Hampshire, you know, right. talking with, uh, obviously, Star last year came with a beautiful display. They're coming back this year, you know, even adding to their display, you know. Then Lee, Bob Watson, he's trying to put something together. Talked to Dick Therian this past weekend over at Canaan, and... Between him and the Scone Group, Sprint Cars in New England, you've seen them at Race and Preview. You know, so we're going to start seeing some different organizations coming you know, through the and gate. That's one of the things that we learned a year or so ago was that we are getting more coverage in New Hampshire than we thought we were. Yeah, and so you know, and it's and it's great because you know one of the things that I can concern myself with at the show is is getting stale. You know, so you know I'd rather give everybody a little bit less display space and make more display space available for different organizations because what happens is and this is what i encourage them all to do is all the people that are coming is to get their supporters you know make them aware that's why i send them out the logo ask them to link it off their uh website their facebook pages or whatever and do that type of thing so now if we can put extra people through the gate that puts extra people looking at your product and my product right. and the next guy's product so uh, real excited about you know everything that's going on. So if you've got a car, you think it's going to be close, or you want it close, and you, you know contact your tracks or tours, you know, and see if you know they're coming. And you know anybody at you know with some past stuff or Oxford stuff. I talked to Tom over the weekend. He's got a lot of stuff going on, as you can imagine, taking yeah. over. You know, it was one thing uh, doing a tour. But now he's got a track, so there's a right, lot of right. you know new things that he's going to be introduced to, running the track, and you know I don't think he's going to have time to to put a display together for the Northeast Motorsports Expo. But like last year, we had Joey Dwyron, you know Ma Mark Lumblad and Andy Shaw and David Weir team displaying their cars. We're kind of representing pass, and we're looking to do the same thing. Billy yep. Dixon contacted me over the weekend; is going to come up. I'm going to be actively looking for some past stuff and as well as Oxford stuff. So if you're interested, just contact me through an email, S. Perry at mainlymotorsportstv.com, and you know, tell me what you got, and we'll find a home for you. Absolutely. There's a lot going on, you know. I was thinking of something. What? You should contact the Segway company and get yourself a Segway for the weekend to drive around up there. Oh, I'd run somebody over, then they'd be <laughs> suing me and all that stuff. But no, it's. Uh, I just can't imagine you know, <sighs> everything that we're trying to plan and. 
go and you know we want to make the northeast motorsports experience for anybody young or old you know an experience you know with, yeah absolutely with, with all the things that we're trying to do the seminars which we'll release this week of the time so you can go on our website i just thought of something else oh great what? Do we have the fudge ladies fighting out for space out front again nope, this year? No, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. Pat's got it. Pat, she came last year and uh, she was the fudge queen, and she was she was actually one of the first three people to contact me this really? year when I put the information out that she wants her spot back. So Perfect. see Pat, the fudge lady, and uh, you know, hey, it must have worked out for her because she came back. That's all I'm saying. Yep, and uh, you know, so just. Just a lot of stuff happening there. And, you know, so if you have a car and you want to display it, contact your track or tour, see what's going on there. And, you know, if you get no luck there, no way. And, and if you're not hearing anything back, but send them the email and contact them because then that shows that track or tour that you're interested in being at the show. They, that, that's good feedback for them so that they know that you're going to be at, that you want to be at a yeah, show. Yeah, because sometimes they don't, if they don't hear anything from anybody, then they don't, they don't do nothing with it. Yeah, yeah, you know, you're exactly right. So real excited about everything that's coming up. And, you know, so follow along at not only MainlyMotorsportsTV.com or watching each week's episode, which you can watch on, you know, the web and all that, which is pretty neat if you miss it. But go to NortheastMotorsportsExpo.net and follow along there because there's a lot of stuff there that now we've released. You know, last week we talked about Ricky Craven coming Friday night, Steve Park coming for the weekend, you know, the Quirk. You know, not just for everybody type of thing to walk through. The mom and two kids go, this ain't nothing for us. But Quirk is doing a big seminar all day Saturday for anybody in the automotive industry, which we know most of the people coming to the show are in the automotive industry. Right. So you get your chance to, to, to go into that. Right. You know, and so, and it's good for them because it gives them feedback. If they see people come in there and, you know, from the show and vice versa, if I see people come in from the show uh, you know, from the quirk thing into the show, you know, it's a it's a win win for everybody. You know? Right. Yeah. So I'm really really looking forward to it. We just you know we're working with Roosters. They're gonna you know we'll have some giveaways and gift certificates from them up at the show. Your motels. Now's the time of year. Don't you know? And it doesn't cost you anything. Just place the phone call to the Best Western Plus or the Comfort Inn and say, hey, you know, I'm looking for a room for Friday night, Saturday night, both, all, whatever. And, you know for the Northeast Motorsports Expo. They got a special rate of $73. And I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty you cheap. You can hang out all weekend, just like us. Yeah, yeah, we'll be there all weekend, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And one of these years, I think I'm gonna stay Sunday. And this year is gonna be nice because we're gonna tape mainly motorsports right from up there on Saturday night. We'll bring the set, everything there, live studio audience, and we're gonna tape it all right there. So, I mean, I ain't gonna have that to do after. So, I mean, I'll be, I'll be a little... We'll be relaxed. Relaxed, that's right. So, I think last year we met up, didn't we, <laughs> somewhere? Oh, yeah, and, eat after. you got to eat, you know. So just keep following along. If you want to know what's going on, just between those two websites, the TV show, ask your friends. And, and you probably already know the Mainly Motorsports. It's MainlyMotorsportsTV.com. Yeah. And then, but the Northeast Motorsports one is Northeast the NortheastMotorsportsExpo.net. Yeah. yeah. If you can't remember the Northeast Motorsports one, you can always go to mainlymotorsportstv.com and just click the link, link and over. you'll be right over. Yeah. So we're going to take a break. We're flying through this week's show, and it was good we had a champion on and get back into the swing of things with champions. You know? Yeah, absolutely. This guy, that's all he does is win championships. <laughs> I know. Was... What do you do? Win championships. <laughs> what do you do? How'd you... Well, I won the championship. <laughs> right. Really? With ease, it sounds like. Yeah. So Robbie Greenleaf. So hopefully he'll be making an appearance at the show as well as others. So I oh. We'll take a break and we'll come back and probably talk some more about the Northeast Motorsports Expo. Under the bright lights of your playing field, one performer continues to shine. The Fisher Extreme V. With durable X bracing, the Extreme V carries the load. With precision passes, the power to bust through, the maximum protection of the Fisher trip edge, and the brightest lights available. Fisher, your business, our passion. The Weir's Motor Sales Incorporated in Arundel. You're watching Mainly Motorsports TV, brought to you by Scotch Recreation. Whether you're thinking about your first camper or looking to upgrade your current one, Scotch Recreation can help you. Get both our Route 202 Manchester and our Route 4 Turner locations and online at scotchrecreation.com.
LKQ Core. Any part, any repair, anywhere. Located on Route 202 in Gorham. Well, I got a call before I headed off to tape this show from George Fernald, you know, former promoter of uh, Unity Raceway, and just wanted me to pass on that this they are going to have a banquet. You know, they presented a lot of awards out when they closed up shop two-thirds of the way through the year, but he just wanted to honor his commitment and kind of honor his, you know, the races that were there to the end with him, that really right. supported him and hoped to make it work at Unity. And, um, and that shows, like we've talked about before, George's commitment to the thing. We know how much effort George sunk into trying to make Unity work for him. And this is just another example of, of George's commitment to yeah, it and the race. Yeah, it shows his class, you know, he's, he's, right. he's first class, you know. And, you know, like George, you know, I hear it in his voice and I talk to him, you know, Steve, geez, you know, I'm, I'm sure I didn't do everything right and I tried. No, he did try, you know, and who, who does everything right, right, you know, as a promoter, you know, and then, you know, obviously I hate to hop on the economy, but it affects some parts of the state more than others. And obviously Absolutely. that area up there, Unity, it's, you don't have that hub like Bangor or, or even Oxford or especially Beechridge of cars to draw from within that 20, 30 mile right. radius. You know, a lot of people travel and, you know, and then once the car counts start dropping off, it's funny. You know, you, you'd think as car counts drop off that people like, oh, there's only six cars I got to go beat. They show up. But people are racers, and they don't want to show up with only five or six cars. They want to race full fields, you know? Right, and that's how most people are. It's, it is odd. They don't want to take the easy way. Which is good. That's what you want, you know? Right. And, and just, you know, so it's too bad that things didn't work out at Unity. Nobody has stepped forward. You know, I was thinking and hoping and, you know, really thought that Jerry Humphrey from Last Chance Motorsports, after working with Ralph to, to put the long john on, was going to be that guy to step up. And, you know, there was a lot of talk going back and forth. I mean, at one point, me and Jerry talked about maybe doing something together at Unity and just, uh, but at the 11th hour, I think Jerry, Jerry's put his deal together with Spud, you know, so. Right. And I know Jerry's. We talked in the last segment about cars. You know, if you're up in the Spud area and, you know, or you're a Bangor guy that's going to support Spud or whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, he's looking for a car to, you know, to put in his booth down at the Northeast Motorsports Expo. Yeah. You know, but, uh, you know, hats off to Jerry. And there's a guy that's going to have a lot going on at the show, not only handling and running the Pit Stop Challenge, you know, his own little booth for Last Chance Motorsports, and then his deal with Spud. So, you know, he'll be a busy little cat. Yeah, he is. But, you know, there's your chance. You know, Spud's looking for a car, and, you know, and who knows? Somebody could step forward between now and three weeks and, you know, for unity. I don't know what's going to happen, but... It looks like right now that 2013, you, you know, unless Ralph decides that he wants to make a go of it with his family, and I don't see that happening. No. You know, they just, they've done it for so many years, and now they got kids that are growing up and getting into racing themselves, and I don't think they're looking for the hassles of running a, a, a racetrack on a day-to-day -day operation. Yeah, I, I, I don't foresee that either, and it's, it's a really tough situation, but, I mean... For those people that race at Unity, if nothing's going on there, then, then venture out. Go to Speedway 95. Go to Wiscasset and support whatever they end up doing there. And, yeah. You know, make something happen. Don't just lay down just because the track's laying down. You know, go do something. And that's one of the things I noticed when Wiscasset, you know, when, when Doug closed the doors at Wiscasset, you know, some of the guys ventured off, but a lot of them just put their cars in the garage and stayed home. Right. That's not good for the sport. No. You, you need to get out and support and, you know, and I understand money gets tight and you can only, you can only race on what you can, you know, your sponsors or what little, you know, money you can set aside right. to go do it with. But, you know, just support motorsports because, you know, luckily Wiscasset's coming back because who knew? I mean, last year at this time, a year before, I mean, who knew what was going to happen with, with, right. with Wiscasset? You know, now, you know, Spud was that way for years and then Greg Vino stepped up, you know. Um, now we're in that boat with Unity. Who knows what's going to happen? You know, it's gone this route before, before George took it over. You know, Ralph, I think, was running it and shut it down. So, you know, will somebody else step up and, and try to be that person? Not, not saying they're going to try to come in and be a hero, but be that person to try to make it feasible. So, A, they can put a dollar in their pocket, but put a good family 
run based race atmosphere on right at a track that needs to be in operation I mean, yeah there's a absolutely. lot of history up there a lot of history and the place i mean yeah there's some improvements that can be made to the place but the track itself has character you know what i mean there's character in the track and it's not like setting your car up to run around some place that's nice and smooth and flat you know you get a road ride on the boat yeah yeah. The bump. You gotta ride over the bumps at Unity. So Yeah, no, you're right. So for all you guys that competed over there this past season, George is putting a banquet on January nineteenth, the week after the Northeast Motorsports Expo. It's gonna be at the uh, I think it's the Winslow or the Winter one of them VFW Hall. Yep. It's the one I was at two years ago that got shut down when my co host at the time thought he was gonna be the man and start a little ruckus. Well I guess they showed him who the man was. <laughs> The banquet got shut down, but to, so he's going to, uh, they're going to have it there. You know, he's invited us to, to come up. So, you know, if things work out, I'd like to go up and, you know, support George in his one last venture with, uh, with Unity Raceway. So he's going to put tickets on sale. It's not a meal. They have some hors d'oeuvres and things like that. Just have a good time, present some awards, some dancing, and just kind of enjoy the evening. Right. So if any more information we get, and George is planning on being at the Northeast Motorsports Expo walking around. So if you see George... You know, give him a pat on the back and you know thank him for everything he did absolutely you know? i mean obviously he didn't do everything right because none of us do and he knows it but you know let's thank him for what he did do right and that was to try to keep unity raceway going and you know in a place for you know the, the races up there to race so we take a break we're going to come back and wrap this week's episode of mainly motorsports up hi i'm scott from scotch recreation most people know us for our rv sales and service we're also maine's largest trailer dealer with over $1 million in stock and online at scotchrecreation.com. From two place opens to five place enclosed and everything in between. Our showrooms are stuffed with used snowmobiles, new jackets, bibs, pants, gloves, boots and helmets, plugs, belts, oil and more. We're ready for winter. Are you? Scott's Recreation, Route 4 Turner and Route 202 Manchester, Maine. You're watching Mainly Motorsports TV, brought to you by... Gary Hotels, located in Brunswick, Freeport, Waterville, and Augusta. The official hotel of Mainly Motorsports. Clark's Car Crushing, located in Hollowell. Providing guaranteed, honest weights, with top dollar being paid. Well, Greg, as we wrap up this week's edition of Mainly Motorsports, our last show before Christmas, so we talked earlier. Neither one of us is ready for Christmas, but we will be. Not a bit. I went to a couple of Christmas parties this past weekend and uh, got presented an award. <laughs> With a Christmas party. Does, you know, do they have to give you an award and everything? I guess. I was like, and it was funny because, you know, my friend Scott Poulin, yeah. is in, he's a mason, he's involved in the Widow Sons, uh, you know, the Grand Chapter over here in, in Old Orchard, and Saco, Biddeford area, and uh, they've do, they do a lot. I mean, a lot of people see these guys with their vests and everything, and, you know, the Hollies, they, oh, you know, first thing is, you know, stereotype. These guys do a lot. I mean, yeah. They raise a lot of money and do a lot of things for, for underprivileged all year long. And uh, one of the things that Scott kind of spearheaded was the Hurricane Sandy relief. You know, two weekends in a row, filled up a U-Haul with water and clothing and stuff and, and took it down to um, New Jersey, New York area. So uh, with, you know, some help from his members. And, you know, I stepped up and got some people to donate some stuff and help unpack some stuff and, you know, we had the use of the garage, and you know, I didn't think I was doing anything extraordinary. Just doing, doing, you know, right. what was the right thing to do. And uh, they honored me last night. You know, it was funny they were giving away, and they, you know, they call each other brothers and stuff. So, you know, I was there with, you know, at the party and having some popcorn and a little drink. <laughs> so, you know, we're like to honor brother Steve Perry. Jeez, I got a brother the same name as me. You know, <laughs> no, you know, they're like, hey, you know. So it was pretty. I tell you, it was pretty neat. Not that I did it for that reason, but these guys really do a lot you know and this is the time of year that you need that stuff you know yep that christmas party season has arrived yeah you guys get your ugly sweater one you know yeah <laughs> at the naughty 40 shop the ugly sweater party I, I don't know i might have to make an appearance if i can find something <laughs> ugly enough i told them i go you want to see my ugly sweater i'm going to take my shirt off <laughs> Jeez. If I start knitting one today, I'll have it done. I got a permanent fur sweater on. Yeah, if I start knitting one today, it'll be done. So, uh, you know, like we talk about, it's the Christmas season, and, you know, it wasn't Maine, but it was New England. Yeah. You know, tragic what happened over in Newtown, Connecticut, you know. Senseless. Senseless is right. And, 
you know, for 20 children. And, you know, this is the thing that, that I think of. You know, I think of myself and my childhood. There was two times in all my years of school that was stood out above other times. One was graduation time. Right. We're done. This is over with, which I'd love to go back right now and be in school. But then the other time was holiday season. Now, I don't know if they still do the Christmas parties and stuff because so much has changed in schools and, you know, with yeah. all the different things and everybody wants to have a say. Right. You know, but I remember being that age and having Christmas parties, you know, exchanging a little gift or whatever, you know, and, and here's these 20 little kids that that was, this was this time of year. Right. You know, and it's just, just amazing that somebody that just could, could take that from not only them but their families. So, you know, what I'm asking you personally to do in honor of those 20, probably nobody that we know even knows any of them 20, but we all have our own children, our own grandchildren, friends with children, girlfriends with children. We all know what it would, what it would feel like to, to have that taken away from us. So, you know, what I'm asking everybody to do is this time of year is, you know, go out and, and try to do that little something for, for, for a kid, a kid that you don't know. When you go into your banks, you go into your stores, you, you have these giving trees, you have all these things that people are trying to do for the ones that are struggling this time of year and, and kids are going to, you know, really struggle, you know, getting up Christmas morning and not have those gifts. Uh, you know, I went out the other day and took a finger and filled it up with those things. I'm not asking you that, but just grab one of those, one of those gift cards or gift tags off that tree and, you know, whether it's a pair of shoes for a seven-year-old girl or a pair of pants or a toy for a nine-year-old boy or, you know, something for that baby, just go out and in honor and in memory of these 20 children that none of us knew, but every one of us feels the loss for what they're feeling out there in Newtown, Connecticut, for their families, community, everybody involved. Just in memory and honor of them, I'm asking you to go out, do something nice, buy that gift, and just donate it to some child that, uh, you know, you're going to put a smile on their face, they're never going to know who you are, but just think about doing that, and then on Christmas Day, you think of that, you know, somewhere out there in Maine, that there's a kid smiling because something you did. So, you know, my last show before Christmas, I'm personally asking each and every one of you that watches the show, and, I mean, we're talking five, ten dollars $10. That's all I'm asking you to do. And try to make a difference this season for, for somebody that, uh, you know, isn't as fortunate as some of us. Or if there is some of you that uh, maybe you're in that position, don't hesitate to send me an email, and I'll do what I can to, to help you and your family because this is the time of year that we're, you know, of any time... Don't think about yourself, think of others. Don't think about, you know, the position you're in because there is somebody in a worse position or struggling a little bit more than you. So, for Steve, I'm Greg. I mean, for Greg, I'm Steve. And uh, I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas on our last episode before Christmas. And like I said, think about those 20 that, that tragically lost their lives and see if we can do something uh, in a little memory of them up here in the state of Maine. It's again our co-host this week, Steve Perry from SP2 Motorsports, and uh, you guys finally made it official uh, on the Oxford 250. Yeah, yeah, it was released last uh, Thursday, I believe it was, about uh, Kyle Busch coming up once again. His excitement to return, and we keep in constant phone contact with him, so he's not just coming for appearance, he's coming to win. And uh, last year, an outstanding performance by uh, Kyle, his first time on the track. All right, and... Uh, I guess Steve's got a Kyle Busch autographed uh, card. Yeah, I, get, I keep coming up with something every yeah. week for the box. Yeah, so. yeah. courtesy of SP2 Motorsports here on Mainly Motorsports, and we're going to give that away to somebody. <laughs> George Fernald Jr. Come on, George. Yeah, well, of course, uh, George just was uh, instrumental in putting on that benefit for John last week at Coyotes. Well, hopefully he's a Kyle Busch fan. If he's not, at least he get a nice 8x10 autograph of Kyle. 